A microscope is focused on a mark on a piece of paper and then a slab of glass of thickness 3 cm and refractive index 1.5 is placed over the mark. How should the microscope be moved to get the mark in focus again? Okay, that is the question. Now let's try to understand what is the key concept here. Okay, so the key concept is that shift happens in the direction of incident ray if mu slab is greater than mu surrounding and opposite to the direction of incident ray if mu slab is less than mu surrounding. Okay, let's try to understand this. So there is a slab and the refractive index of the slab is greater than that of the surrounding. Okay, now if the object is here and you follow the ray diagram, you can see that the image is formed here and the shift happens in the direction of the incident light. Is that correct? Now the opposite is also possible. So here the refractive index of the slab is less than that of surrounding. And if the object is placed here, by following the ray diagram, you can see very clearly that the image is going to be formed here. So the shift happens opposite to the direction of the incident light. Okay, now this information is very important because we don't just have to tell the magnitude of the shift, we have to tell the direction of shift as well. Okay, so with that in mind, let's try to solve this question. So there is a microscope which is focused on point P before the introduction of glass slab. Okay, now when the glass slab is introduced, what is going to happen? Because of the glass slab, there is going to be a shift in the image. Okay, so the microscope will also have to be adjusted to focus on the mark again, right? That is the simple understanding needed here. Now, in order to calculate the magnitude of shift, that is very simple. The shift is given by delta x is equal to t into 1 minus 1 by mu when the surrounding is air. Okay, t is the thickness, mu is the refractive index of the slab. Okay, so let's quickly find out what is delta x. So delta x is equal to t which is 3 centimeter multiplied by 1 upon 1.5. Is that correct? All the data is here. Now, so this becomes 3 into 0 0.5 upon 1.5. So this becomes 1 centimeter. Now the shift is 1 centimeter. But the critical question is, what is the direction of the shift? Okay, let's try to figure that out. Okay, here is the object. Now what is the direction of incident light? This is the direction of incident light. Correct? Also, what is the surrounding? The surrounding is air. What is the slab? Slab is glass. Okay, so obviously the refractive index of the slab is greater than the refractive index of the surrounding. Okay, so the shift is going to happen in what direction? Absolutely, the shift is going to happen in the direction of the incident light. Is that clear? So the microscope will also be have to will also have to be adjusted in the same manner. Okay, so the microscope has to be shifted by one centimeter and in what direction? And in the upward direction. Okay, that should be my answer. And now let's have a look at the options. So A is going to be my right option. For which of the given colors, critical angle of light passing from glass to air is minimum? Assume reflection at interface is negligible and the options are red, green, yellow or violet. All right, that is the question. Now first, let's try to understand what is the key concept. The concept here is that different colors have different wavelengths and hence different refractive indices. Okay, now you should be well aware of this famous diagram where a prism splits the white light into constituent colors. Now, why does that happen? Because different colors have different wavelengths and hence different refractive indices. If the refractive indices are different, the angle of refraction will be different. Hence, the amount of deviation would be different. So different colors get deviated by different amounts and hence they get split. Okay, this is the key concept involved over here. So we need to apply that in our question. Okay, first of all, what is critical angle? When light travels from denser medium to rarer medium, at a particular angle, which is called a critical angle, the angle of refraction becomes 90 degree. That is the refracted light passes along the boundary of the surfaces. Perfect. Okay. Now here, what is the situation? The situation is here we have glass and here we have air. Okay. Now what is the value of critical angle? We know that sine IC is equal to mu r upon mu d. Whereas mu r is the refractive index of the rarer medium. This and mu d is the refractive index of the denser medium. Okay, so can we say this is equal to mu r which is 1 upon mu of glass. Okay, now mu of glass is going to depend on the color of light as well. Okay, now what do we know? If we write vibjor, 
if we are going in the direction of violet to red, we are going in the direction of increasing wavelength. Is that correct? We are well aware of that. Okay. Now, what is the relationship between wavelength and refractive index? Let's recall that. So, we know that mu1 upon mu2 is equal to v2 upon v1 is equal to lambda 2 upon lambda 1. Right? This is the relationship between the three quantities. Now, this tells me very clearly that mu is inversely proportional to lambda. Okay? So, suppose I'm going from violet to red. What is happening to lambda? Lambda is increasing. Okay? If lambda is increasing, mu is going to be decreasing. Okay? If mu is going to be decreasing, then 1 by mu g is going to be increasing. If 1 by mu g is going to be increasing, then because sine is an increasing function in the first quadrant, ic is also going to be increasing. Is that correct? Okay? So, if we are going from violet to red, critical angle is increasing. Hence, when we are going to get the minimum critical angle? When we are at violet. Hence, what should be my answer? My answer should be violet. And what are the options? So, option D is going to be the correct option. A light ray is incident on an inclined glass air interface as shown. The largest angle phi for which the light ray is totally reflected at the surface AC is. Okay, what is the, that is the situation. So, what is the key concept involved here? That when light travels from denser medium to rarer medium, the total internal reflection takes place if the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle. We know this pretty well. Okay. So, the situation here is something like that as well. So, AC is the boundary of glass and air. Okay. And light is traveling from the denser medium to the rarer medium. Hence, total internal reflection can take place. What does it depend upon? It depends upon the angle of incidence. Okay, so let's try to find out the angle of incidence. Now, this light ray here and this slab surface or this side over here are parallel to each other. Okay, so this angle is going to become phi because this angle is phi. Okay, now if I draw a normal on this boundary, then this is 90 degree. Okay, which means this angle is going to be 90 minus phi and this angle is the angle of incidence. Is that correct? Okay. Now, this angle 90 minus phi has to be greater than the critical angle. If it is greater than the critical angle, then total internal reflection for sure will take place. Okay. Now, if 90 minus phi is greater than some angle, then phi has to be smaller than some angle. Okay. Hence, we can find the maximum value of phi. Okay. So, again, not getting into inequality. The simple thing is that we find out phi for which 90 minus phi is the critical angle. That is it. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay. So, repeating it again, what do we need to find out? We need to find out phi when 90 minus phi is the critical angle. Okay. So, 90 minus phi is equal to the critical angle. Critical angle IC. What is critical, critical angle? Okay. So, critical angle is sine inverse of what? Sine inverse of mu r upon mu d. Is that correct? Okay, so can I say 90 minus phi should be equal to sine inverse of mu r. What is mu r? The rarer medium, which is air in this case. So 1 divided by the denser medium, which is glass. So 3 by 2. So this 2 can go upstairs. Okay, now what we can do is we can take sine on both sides. Okay, so sine 90 minus phi is going to become cos phi. And sine inverse 2 by 3, the sine of that is going to become simply 2 by 3. So, phi comes out to be what? Cos inverse of 2 by 3. Now, we have already discussed that if this is phi, okay, phi is cos inverse 2 by 3, then 90 minus phi is the critical angle, okay. And we have already discussed that if phi decreases from this amount, okay, then total internal reflection will take place. Otherwise, it will not, okay. So, doing this simplifies my calculation. I found the answer and what are the options? The option is option A and that is the correct one. Light takes time T1 to travel a distance X1 in rarer medium M1. And the same light takes time T2 to travel a distance X2 in a relatively denser medium M2. The critical angle for the pair of media will be. Okay, that is the question. And what is the key concept involved? Which you are well aware of. That critical angle is equal to sine inverse of mu upon mu d. And the relationship between refractive index 
and speed is mu1 upon mu2 is equal to v2 upon v1. The relationship is inverse. Okay. Now let's see how we can solve this problem. Okay. Now this is a denser medium m2 and a rarer medium m1. Okay. So what is given to us that in medium m1, it takes t1 amount of time to travel a distance x1. So basically what have they given us? They have given us the speed, which is going to be x1 upon t1. Correct. Perfect. Similarly, they have given us the speed in medium 2, which will be x2 upon t2. Perfect. They want us to find out critical angle. Okay. What is critical angle? That is sine inverse of mu r upon mu d. Okay. Perfect. So what is mu r? Mu r is medium 1, which is the rarer medium and mu d is the denser medium, which is the medium 2. Okay. So can I say ic is equal to sine inverse of mu1 upon mu2. So basically mu1 is the refractive index of medium 1 or m1, mu2 is the refractive index of m2. Perfect. Do I know the refractive indices? No, I don't know. What I know is the speeds. Okay, do I know the relationship? Absolutely, I know the relationship. So mu1 upon mu2 is equal to v2 upon v1. Is that correct? Can I substitute it there? Absolutely, I can. So IC becomes sine inverse of mu1 upon mu2, I can replace that by v2 upon v1. So IC becomes sine inverse of v2. What is v2? x2 by t2. And what is v1? x1 by t1. Hence x2 t1 upon t2 x1. That is the critical angle. And if I rearrange the terms, I can write it as sine inverse of x2 t1 upon x1 t2. Okay, that is going to be my answer. And let's have a look at the options and option D is going to be the right option. A ray of light from a denser medium strikes at the interface of a rarer medium at an angle of incidence I. If the reflected and the refracted rays are mutually perpendicular to each other, then the critical angle is. All right. So the situation is a little interesting here. So light is incident at the boundary of a denser medium and rarer medium. So light is going from denser medium to rarer medium. Okay. So it is refracted away from the normal and also some part of the light is reflected. Okay. Now the relationship we have is that the reflected ray and the refracted ray making an angle 90 degree. Okay. So if I is the incident angle, angle of incidence, R is the angle of refraction then this angle, which is the angle of reflection is also going to be I angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Okay, perfect. In this situation and whatever is given to us, we need to find out what will be the critical angle. Okay, so first of all, what is critical angle? Critical angle is equal to mu of rarer upon mu of tensor. Okay, what is the rarer medium here? It is medium two. And what is the tensor medium here? It is mu one. Okay, so I know I have the relationship between critical angle and mu2 and mu1. But that is not the relationship I want. The relationship I want is between the angle of incidence and critical angle that we can see from the options. Okay, so let's try to figure that out. So one thing is also we can conclude is that the angle of reflection i and the angle of refraction r, the sum is going to be 90 degree because this is 90. And this entire thing is going to be 180 degree. So can I say I plus R is equal to 90 degree? Yes. Okay. So that is something I can see here. Okay. Still not close to the solution. I want a relationship between the refractive index and angle of incidence so that I can make the substitution. Correct. What is it that we know? Do we know a relationship? Of course, we know a relationship and that is the most fundamental relationship. Snell's law. So sin I upon sin R is equal to mu2 upon mu1. Is that correct? And I see mu2 by mu1 here as well. So sin ic is equal to sin i upon sin r. Now it look like, looks like we are getting close. Okay. But in the option, I don't see r. So I somehow have to eliminate r. Okay. Can I see that? So r is equal to 90 degree minus i. Do I see that? And what do I need? I need sin r. So if I take sin, so this becomes sine r is equal to sine 90 minus i, which will become cos i. Okay, now putting all of this together, can I say that sine ic is equal to mu2 upon mu1 and mu2 upon mu1 is sine i upon sine r. And here I can write sine i 
and sin r I can replace it by cos i. Okay, so what do I get? I get sin i c is equal to tan of i. Hence, I C is going to be sine inverse. I C is going to be sine inverse of tan I, and that is going to be my answer. All right, that is the answer. And let's have a look at the options. So, option A is going to be the right option.